Jamie, some good news with funding coming in for support or engagement. Yep, we've uh, received £18,400 from the Premier League and Football Foundation to engage with the fans. Um, it is a fan engagement project, so it'll range from providing a fan zone from this Saturday uh, behind the South Stand, or between the South Stand and the West Stand. Um, so we've got some, well, a considerable amount of funding to, to like I said, engage with the fans and, and do, do what they want, basically. I suppose the first thing you mentioned there is like the fan zone, so the idea is to have a stage, a band playing before the game, a little mini you know, beer festival around, food and drink, and just sort of make a, a proper sort of fan zone area. Yeah, like I said, the, the uh, majority of the funding is going towards um, the stage and the, the PA system that we need for that, and obviously the crowd control that we'll need, obviously with, with vehicles going around in that area. Um, so that gives us the base to start it. We have four games between now and the end of the season to trial what we want. So we're trying to get feedback from the people that use it during there, the fans that come in. Um, it's not going to be the finished article straight away, we know that, uh, but it's something that we think will grow and grow and grow. Um, I was recently at Wembley for a match and the fan zone there was, was superb and, and it seems to be the way that a lot of football clubs are going. Yeah, because I mean, we've been to many clubs this season and a lot of them have different sort of facilities outside all the way through the uh, season. But again, it's just something as a, a starting place for us. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing. It's a starting point where we can set something up, see how it runs, see how it gets supported. I mean, that's the main thing is, is we need to get as much support into the fan zone in the next four games as we can, starting from Saturday um, to show its worth. Um, potential sponsors that might want to sponsor the fan zone, which means we can develop it even further, would be fantastic. Uh, we've already got ideas as, from the community scheme side of side of it that we'll do some kids' activities within it towards yeah. the end of the season when we can guarantee the weather will be a little bit better. Um, so that will obviously have the family side of it and the activity side. Um, the band playing will obviously all be local bands, um, so we're supporting that way. And then we can look at the food and the catering that we'll have, especially for next year, of, of what the supporters want and, and see if we can provide that. Location-wise as well, next to the, the planned... Uh community facility so again it can give people an insight into what could happen when that actually comes on board yeah i mean it's been frustrating obviously it hasn't been passed through with the council yet uh, the plans that we have or the the ideas that we have for the community pitch it will far outweigh just being a grass football pitch there um, but obviously we need the pitch first of all so having a fan zone next to it um, will obviously give people lots of ideas of what could possibly go on that area of land alongside a football pitch um, it is a bigger space than where the little supermarket will be going so mm -hmm. you you can see the potential of what could happen on that site because once it's up and running hopefully you get an idea of what buildings can go around it and what offices what other structures that you can put into just around the pitch exactly exactly and it goes into our our plan with the community scheme anyway that we're still developing we're still growing in size of number of staff um, which will go again in July so we have to look at where we're being housed and, and what we can deliver um, and how that fits into the whole of what the what the need is for the community um, and obviously working in partnership with the club what what we can work with them to make make a really viable um, area of land there for for both the community scheme the club and the fans and looking at the weather forecast one good part of the planning that you've put into place is going to be sunny on uh, saturday that's what it says at the moment <laughs> so hopefully oh yeah it'll be a nice bright day it's our community day as well so we've got um over 500 people coming from the different activities that we do from disability the women's and girls the elderly engagement we do so it'll be hopefully a really fantastic day where um, a lot of the fans will be able to see the work that the community do the other part of the funding as well can be used for fan engagement and looking around the county at supporters groups and just how to help increase the supporter base and, and the group's uh, interaction. Yeah, there was a, a chunk of the funding that was to look at um, how we engage with the fans. So starting at workshops, uh, working with current fan um, and supporter clubs, increasing the number of supporter clubs if we can around the county and around the country if not the world, if it, if it can work that far with the internet nowadays. Um, and then, yeah, seeing who we're missing. So not just the floating ones that have been before, but quite possibly the, the 
migrants that have come into the county why are they not coming to watch what will be their local club when when they eventually settle here so is it a language barrier that we can work around in terms of our marketing of the matches or is it a cost is it is it the timings of the games that we have to look at and and loads loads of different things that we can work at but it's very much fan led as well so the workshops we're setting up we've got a um, again part of the funding is for a volunteer um, fan engagement officer which will be one of our members of staff which will allocate some time per week for the whole of next season um, which will be trying to link all of these clubs together it's linking um, a possible uh, disability supporters association um, a youth council so we have a youth voice as well um, so we're getting all the different demographics that that come to the club and working out what they need um, and what they want and i was speaking to brian yesterday he's very keen to get well, increase the numbers coming to the game and increase the the uh, transport links from around the county and with it being a rural county if the two can work together then we can pretty much start to bring buses from a lot of other places yeah exactly that and i mean for me it's one of the most exciting funding applications that we've had um agreed to be honest it's it's not as much money as some of the other funding applications we get for the projects we do but this one is really showing a strong partnership that we have with the football club um, and hopefully with the fans involved in it as well there'll be a really um really good outcome to what we can do um, the funding we have will give us a, a massive head start to what I'm sure the fans want, what the club want, and definitely what we want within the community scheme. Because there's already a, a lot of strong supporters groups here, but me and you have been to a lot of meetings and you always see the same faces. So I guess it's trying to find those ones who not don't have a voice, but don't speak up sometimes and get their feedback. Yeah, I think um, some of the more successful clubs in terms of the amount of fan groups they have make it a lot more flexible to, to be a supporters club. Um, so it's looking at working with the existing fan groups now to see if they can spread and spread geographically across the county um, and give them the expertise that they already have within their group and the support of the football club and the community community scheme to do that uh, try and get my words out here um, to use to use the the infrastructure that we have to grow and grow and grow so for example if we have a, a strong supporters group in Oswald Street um, and there's a supporters coach that already comes over from there can we fill that supporters coach every game can we get another supporters coach if we have six seven eight of those supporter groups across the county can we then go to the the travel provider and look to see if we can and get a better deal for them basically so it's cheaper for people to come to the games um, which might be a stumbling block why people don't come as regularly as they could I guess fine as well it's all part of that one club one community thing that's been going this season and to build that and to can you continue that to, to grow yeah it's all it is all coming together obviously one town is in one Shrewsbury town um, and one community which is the whole of Shropshire um, with the work that we're doing in the community department it, it stretches across the whole of Shropshire at the moment so I know our South Shropshire hub is is thriving at the moment we had a tournament there the other day with 1400 people attending so there's there's big plans in the in the south of the county we're looking towards the north of the county now of what we can do and also looking in Telford and Reekin of, of where we can spread our work so for for our work to spread across, we do need the supporters groups to, to go with it because nine times out of ten, they're the ones that want to engage with Shrewsbury Town, whether it's in Shrewsbury, whether it's in Ludlow, Oster Street, Telford um, or Whitchurch. So it's it's us spreading and, and the fans group spreading at the same time.